Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another installment of the New Jersey Self Advocacy Project's Stay Healthy at Home webinar series. As you know, today's topic is the census, all about the United States Census. So, my name is Ashley Ritchie. I'm the director of the New Jersey Self Advocacy Project, which is a program of the ARC of New Jersey and has been since 1983. We are division funded, um, a program that supports the state's largest network of individual self advocates and self advocacy groups. My team and I provide comprehensive training and resources to self advocates, direct support professionals, and agency personnel statewide. We are so appreciative of your time and for joining us today. Just as a reminder, if you haven't tuned into the webinars before, if you have questions, comments, or any feedback throughout the presentation, please feel free to enter that information into the questions box. And we will make sure to do our best to help you out. All right, so before we jump into the slides, I'd like to conduct a little poll. Let's see, it's our first time doing this. So if you could just check out this poll and pick the option that kind of best suits how you are attending this webinar today. Are you attending as a self-advocate? Are you attending as a family member, or sibling, direct support professional, support coordinator, or a member of a support coordination agency? Or would you identify as other, none of those categories? So we're uh, polling right now, it's in progress, collecting some responses. All right, thank you so much for everybody who participated. I'd like to share the results with you all, just in case you're curious. Um, so it looks like the majority of our audience is from a support coordination agency or another type of agency personnel. Super exciting. My hope is that in speaking to support coordinators and agency professionals, I hope that you take this information and share it with the folks that you support in your work. I think it's really, really critical that we kind of take this info and just spread it widely because there's such wide ranging implications for the results of the census on programs and supports for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So grateful for the DSPs in attendance and self-advocates and family members. This is so exciting. So thank you for participating in our very first webinar poll. All right. So when we do this presentation or when we used to do this presentation in person, we would always start off by asking the audience, you know, are you ready for the census? Are you prepared? Do you know what's coming? And I'll be asking this again at the end of the session. So I hope again that this information is helpful to you as someone who supports folks with disabilities, as a family member, as an advocate. So I hope that by the end of this webinar, you are ready to go. You're ready to participate in the census. Let's start off with basics. What is the census? It is a nationwide survey that happens every 10 years. And the goal of the census is to collect a total population count of every single person living in the United States. The really important part of that count is that folks are counted just once and in the right place. So we're gonna define the right place in just a moment, but the goal of the census is to just count every single person living in this country once and in the right place. The U.S. Census Bureau is the largest statistical agency in the United States, and they are responsible for carrying out the census. Interesting fact, the census is mandated by the U.S. Constitution. And the first census was conducted way back in 1790. So the census has been around for a long time. It reflects an increasingly diverse and growing population throughout this country. So the last census counted 330 million individuals living in more than 140 million different households. So right off the bat, you may be wondering, what's the census about? Why do we devote time and energy to conducting this type of survey? Well, for one, we know that the results of the census determine how many seats each state has in the U.S. House of Representatives. So that's our federal representation. We're going to get into details on this a little later, but essentially the census determines the apportionment count, which tells 
the government how to divide the 435 total seats in the US House of Representatives amongst the 50 states. So that's based on the apportionment population from the census. It also determines the amount of funding that comes streaming into New Jersey from the federal government every year. So every state gets a certain amount of federal funding. We know that there's a total of about $675 billion in federal funding that is allocated to the states. And of that 675 total billion dollars, 22 billion is used to specifically for programs and supports in New Jersey. So that money funds things like Medicaid. We know it's critically important to folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities and other members of the population. SNAP benefits. We know that it determines funding for road planning and highway management, Section 8 housing, special education, S CHIP, which is the state children's health insurance program, as well as a host of other programs that support low income folks, as well as folks with disabilities and children statewide. And again, we know that the total population count, the results of the census determine congressional and state legislative districts, school districts, and voting districts. It also helps different businesses, community groups, and, and the government plan for different programming based on population density throughout the state. And fun fact, the census provides a lot of information for the other surveys that are conducted by the US Census Bureau. So just so you know, the Census Bureau uh, hosts other surveys based on housing, how Americans are using their time, interesting, business expenses, surveys of entrepreneurs, the public employment payroll. They have a study all about teachers. So how major life events occurring in the lives of teachers determine their career path. There's also surveys about fishing, hunting, and wildlife life recreation. Basically, the US Census Bureau loves numbers and data. So they are conducting other surveys aside from the census. If you come away with one point from this whole webinar, it is that your participation in the US Census, the 2020 Census, absolutely matters. It is critical. It's critical that we get a full and total count of every person living in New Jersey as well as the country. Um, the results of the 2010 Census actually reflected a slower population growth in New Jersey. So we did end up losing a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives. I think for those of us who you know, live in New Jersey full time, we're traveling on the roads when we're not in a stay at home order. We know that New Jersey's population seems to be growing. There's a lot of people around. There's a lot of people on the roads and the stores, again, when we're not in a stay at home order. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of folks aren't filling out the census. So we did lose a vote and we lost a seat in the House. So that resulted in one less vote in the Electoral College for presidential elections. So representation matters and our participation really does count towards getting a full complete count of New Jersey's population. So this is taken directly from the census website. They created a little infographic um, that basically stresses what we're trying to get across today that every single person should be participating. It's not optional. Um, it is a requirement. So it is your civic duty to participate. Again, not optional. And actually, you, uh, if you've already received your reminders from the US Census Bureau, you'll notice that on the envelope that contains your census and an invitation to, to uh, participate in the census, right on the front of the envelope it says your requ your response is required by law so um the census bureau i think does a nice job of just hammering home how critical it is that folks be counted and it is happening right now it is an ongoing survey we're going to talk in just a little bit about the time frame for this the census but now is the time to participate okay and we're going to jump into our second poll our final poll of the webinar. I'd like to know if you all have 
participated in the census already. And I am going to share the results. So it looks like 6% of folks did respond by mail. So they received their invitation in the mail and completed it on paper. The majority of folks did complete the census by computer. Way to go. It is the first time ever that you are able to complete the census over the computer. So the first digital census in the history of the census. Um, some folks did complete the census by phone, the same amount by mail, interesting. And we've got about 31% of people that have not yet completed the census. Awesome, thank you very much for participating. And again, for those of you who have not yet completed it, my hope is that you'll come away from this webinar feeling you know, prepared and armed with the information you need to fill out the census. So when we were delivering this training in person, a lot of, a lot of the questions that came up resulted in uh, safety and privacy issues. Folks asked, you know, is it, is it safe for me to fill out the census? Absolutely, your responses are private and confidential. You are sharing personal information about yourself when you fill out the census, but that information is not published. It is, it is collected by the US Census Bureau and it is absolutely against the law for the Census Bureau to use that information for any other purpose than to create data or create numbers. So it is not being shared by other government agencies, courts, judges. That is 100% not happening. The Census Bureau collects the data and they keep it to themselves and they process it internally. So it is not shared. And the Census Bureau employees are actually sworn to protect the confidentiality of the responses that they review for life. So even when they retire from being a Census Bureau worker, they can't uh, share that information. So again, the Census Bureau loves data, they love numbers, but they only use your responses to produce statistics and data that inform what we talked about before, funding, government planning, school districts, voting districts, all right, so now that we know that it is safe to fill out the 2020 census, here's some questions specific to folks living in a group home. You might ask, you know, I live in a group home or even a supervised apartment. Should I be completing the census? Yes, residents of group homes, supervised apartments, or other group living arrangements should absolutely participate in the census. Remember, the goal is to count every single person just once and in the right space. So you wanna be counted in the right place, which is where you sleep most nights of the year. So some questions that came up during past trainings. Well, I go on vacation to Florida for a couple weeks every year. Should I be counted down there on my vacation home? No, definitely not. You wanna be counted where you spend most nights of the year. So if you just spend two weeks in uh, Florida or Hawaii or Alaska, that's nice. That sounds like a cool vacation, but don't fill out the census there because you are not a full-time resident of that state. If you're sleeping in New Jersey most nights of the year, that's where you fill it out. And I should also say that if you're living in a temporary space, if you're staying with a friend, if you were staying with that friend on census day, which is April 1st or was April 1st of 2020, you should have been counted there if you were staying there full time. And we'll get into the specifics of that in just a bit. But again, the right place is where you sleep most nights of the year. And just keep in mind, if you feel like you need a little bit of assistance in filling out the census, you can absolutely request that from a staff member, a friend, someone that you trust, or you can request that a census worker help you fill out the census. So there's a little bit of a caveat for the in-person appointments. They are actually on hold due to COVID-19, but you can still request a phone interview with a census worker. All right, so how about if you live in a rental property? Do you still have to fill out the census? Yes, because everyone counts, regardless of whether you're renting or you own your home or you live in any type of rental property or shared space, a mobile home, condo, 
it doesn't matter. You want to make sure that you are counted again in the right place, which is where you spend most nights of the year, where you sleep most of the time. So let's get into details about exactly what the census asks for. What type of information are they collecting? Well, they do want to know your name, first, last, middle, initial, if you have one. They want to know your age and birth date. So this was a question that came up in trainings. Well, if they have my age, why do they know my, why do they want to know my birth date? What does it matter? They want to make sure that they can check this information against uh, one or the other. So they want to make sure if your age, your age corresponds to your year and date of birth. They want to know your race and ethnic origin. So how you identify in terms of ethnicity. They do not ask about citizenship. That is not included. So they do not ask if you are a US citizen or anybody in the house is US citizen, but they do ask what your relationship is to the other people on your census. And this is on here, uh, the citizenship issue, because this was actually a rumor that was spreading about the census. So now you can tell everybody citizenship is not a question included on the census. Um, but again, they do want to know what your relationship is to the other people included on your census, your household census. They also ask about gender. And for those of you who have received the census in the mail, um, we're gonna, we, I have a snapshot of exactly what it looks like and we're going to review that in a bit. Um, but they also do ask you um, what type of dwelling do you live in? Is it owned by you or someone else? Is it rented? Is it occupied without paying rent? And they also ask if there are any other folks living in your home on April 1st that should be included. So that might include children who are related or unrelated to you, including newborn babies. They may ask about roommates or live-in babysitters, nannies, or people who are staying at your home temporarily, but were staying at your home most nights of the week as of April 1st. So again, does the US Census, the 2020 Census ask about citizenship? No, this is very, very clear on the Census Bureau website. They are not asking a citizenship question. So, um, and basically what that comes down to is that they're not interested in uh, citizenship versus non-citizen. They are interested in every single person residing, living full-time in a particular state or in the country. Um, you may ask why, why don't they wanna know if someone's a citizen or not? Well, people may be less likely to respond if they fear that they could get in trouble based on that information. Um, again, we know that the US Census Bureau does not share the results of the census, the specific information of an individual census with any law enforcement agency or other government agency. It's just the statistics and the data about population. Um, but they do not ask whether you are a citizen or anyone in your home is a citizen. So like I said, this was that kind of a rumor that was circulating around. Um, and you can feel free to share this with folks. They're not asking about citizenship and every single person residing in New Jersey should fill out the census. So this is a sample of what the census invitation may look like. At this point, everybody should have received a paper copy of this in, their ma in the mail. It should have been mailed to your home. Um, a couple things about the invite, it's gonna come in just a plain white envelope. On one side, it will say US, United States Census 2020, coming from the US Census Bureau. And like I said, there's that little box there, kind of big and bold that says your response is required by law. On the flip side of the envelope, there is an appeal to shape your future, start here. You can fill out the census online. So like I said, this is the first time that they're doing the census over the computer, which is pretty exciting. And I'm happy that uh, most of the folks in attendance today did fill it out over the computer. So you will get the invite and it looks something like this. And it is essentially just asking you to fill out the census. Please note that they are going to include a unique census ID on your invite. So that is 
identification that you can use to respond online. Don't share it with anybody. It is not the same as your neighbor or your best friend. It is specific to your household and it is the way that the Census Bureau can track your household's response. Um, so the message, and again, you can read this, but it basically says that it's, you know, they're securely collecting information online via the internet and they're just trying to go green. You can, they can save a bit of money, they can save some natural resources by not having to process all that paperwork. But you should have received this already. At this point, if you haven't filled out the census, you may have received three, two or three different invites, um, but the census ID stays the same, it's unique to your household. So when you open up the census envelope, you're going to see that invite asking you to fill it out in any way that you're comfortable, whether it's over the computer, by mail, by filling out this copy, paper copy of the census, or by phone. Um, and again, this information that they're asking for, who's living in the house, how old are they, how do they identify, um, they ask about gender, telephone number, that's number four on the census, what's your telephone number, and they have a note there that they are only going to contact you if they have questions about the census. So if something's not um, legible to them, if they just want to clarify information on the census, that would be the only reason they would follow up by phone. They're not selling the phone number to anyone. Uh, that is illegal. They're not able to do that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty basic information. In general, it should take between five and 10 minutes to fill out, depending on how many people you live with. Um, but it's very basic information. And again, it is not asking about citizenship, um, but it does ask about age, gender, ethnic background, origin. Um, and if someone else, if you say you have a um, college age student that was living on campus before, uh, COVID-19 happened. This asks you specifically, does this person usually live or stay somewhere else? So if, for instance, your, you know, son or daughter does live on campus for college, you could just say, yes, they live in college and yeah, they're on a military assignment overseas. They live somewhere else for work or business. The most important part is that you reflect the people who are living in your home most nights of the year. Okay, so we did mention before that Census Day is April, or was April 1st, 2020. Uh, there was some confusion about this because it kind of sounds like a deadline, right? Like, okay, Census Day is April 1st. You know, I have to fill out the census by that day. That's not the case. April 1st is the reference date. So they're asking you in the census, um, on April 1st, where are you living? Where does... Does anybody live with you as of April 1st? That's what you want to keep in mind when you're filling out the census. Who is living in your house as of that date? So not April of last year, not July 2020, April 1st. So it's more of a reference date. It's definitely not a deadline. The census is ongoing. It's on a rolling basis. You can still participate. And I took this snap um, snapshot from the census website as well. Like I said, it's really the first time that they are including the internet self-response, the digital census, which is really exciting. Um, and what we're doing today is really motiv motivating people to respond. So the ARC of New Jersey and the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project um, really found it important to get behind this campaign and to promote census participation because unfortunately, a lot of folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities are not accurately um, counted or reflected on the census. So when we know that a lot of programs that folks with disabilities use are funded by, uh, the funding is determined by the results of the census, we just know that it's super important that every single person is counted. So again, the whole goal, count everyone once in the right place. Let's check out New Jersey's self-response rate. I wish I created a poll that said, what do you guys think the response rate is so far? Um, but we're going to look at the results as of May 3rd. That was the most recent uh, data that was available. But I included a live link if you want to check out 
uh, self-response rates by state so far. You can click this link right here. Um, but let's check out Jersey. Let's see where we're at. So when I first started compiling um, additional data for this webinar, it was May, uh, April 21st. So at, as of that date, we were at 53%, not bad. Still a little bit higher than the national average, but certainly not a full and complete count. So we have work to do. Um, and again, I think it's fun. You can you can go state by state and collect, uh, select which state you wanna see. You can go county, city, congressional district. You can really break it down into different demographics. Um, but overall, the state of New Jersey had 53% of the, the folks who received a census invite had completed it as of April 21st. So again, I checked today and the most recent data was as of May 3rd and we jumped up to 58%. So from 53 to 58.3, not too shabby. Uh, again, the national average is 56.6. .6, so we're still a little bit higher than that. But again, we have work to do in terms of getting everybody to respond. I looked at California, really big state, uh, kind of the total opposite of us in terms of geography. Um, as of April 21st, they had 52.8% of responses. And today, or as of May 3rd, it had jumped up to 57.8. Let's look at New York, our neighbors to the north. They were at 45.8% response rate as of April 21st. And as of this weekend, they had jumped up to 50.8. I think that, you know, something could be said for lower response rates due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but again, it, it is critically important that we all get on board with this and that we all do our best to complete the census. Uh, if it takes a couple of reminders for other people in our household, or, or if you do need help, you know, asking a couple of times for staff to sit down, family members to sit down together and get this information together, it really does impact everybody. So Minnesota got that message. Minnesota is, has the highest self-response rate of any state in the nation. So as of May 3rd, they were at 67.2%. And again, I wanted to stress that um, April 1st was not a deadline. You can continue to fill this out. You will continue to receive invites to fill out the census uh, well into the summer. Um, they really, the Census Bureau really does want everybody to complete it. So there is still time. Um, I did want to share a couple of different locations for census offices throughout the state with a caveat that these offices are not open, not currently open to the public in any way. Um, the Census Bureau is working remotely, like most of us. Um, they are not in the community right now. They're not visiting households right now, but these are the locations where census uh, bureau offices are located. So we have Dover and Morris County, Nutley, Patterson, Jersey City. There seems to be a nice concentration up in the north northeast part of the state. Um, and then you'll notice in the south where it's more rural, uh, lower population density, they do have the office in Atlantic City. There's one in the capital of Trenton and one in Tom's River to represent Monmouth, Ocean, and Burlington counties. So we've already covered this a little bit, but how can you participate in the census? There are three different options. You can complete the census digitally. So you'll get your invitation. You can go to the secure census website to complete, or you can fill out the invitation that you get in the mail, the actual paper census that you get in the mail, along with your census invite. Or you can opt to complete the census over the phone with a US Census Bureau representative. The important thing to note here is that you should only pick one option, one way to respond. Um, there is a check built into the US Census Bureau's protocol um, that tries to identify duplicate responses, but you know, just confer with the members of your household, make a decision, which one are you gonna go with? Are you gonna go online, by mail, or by phone? Um, I thought it was really cool that the census is actually available in 13 languages. So if you opt to fill it out um, 
online or by phone, you'll be prompted to choose the language that you prefer. So English, Spanish, Chinese, Vietnamese, Korean, Russian, Tagalog, Polish, French, Haitian Creole, Portuguese, and Japanese are the options. And if you are interested in requesting a phone call to fill out the census on phone, um, there are directions for that in, in the invite that was mailed to your house. Um, March 12th was a big week for the Census Bureau. That was really when they were reaching out to folks and sending out those initial invites. So there is a toll-free number included on the invite and you'll be asked to choose again, one of, um, it is actually 13 languages that you can complete over the phone. And if you choose to fill it out online, same deal. You'll be prompted to choose which language you would like to fill it out with. And in preparation for our, our census training, before we kind of put this into action, I was able to speak with Cheryl Bolden, who is the coordinator for our state, the state of New Jersey. She was very helpful in um, fact checking the information in this presentation and offered her, her contact information in case folks did have questions. So you'll notice that her email is her name at 2020census.gov. So like I said before, the US Census Bureau is a government agency. It's not a private agency. It's not a for-profit agency. It's a government entity. Think of uh, just like the Department of Human Services or the Division of Labor. It's a government agency. Um, Cheryl was nice enough to include her office phone and to share her work cell phone in case you have questions um, or want more information about the census. She is available along with many other Census Bureau employees throughout the state. Cheryl did note that in-person interviews are a last resort. It's really only offered in case there's just no way for the person to fill out the census in an alternate way. So if they're not able to access the internet, a phone, or fill out the, the physical form that comes to, in the mail, then the Census Bureau may decide to visit the home to help the person fill it out. But I will note that due to COVID-19, in-person interviews and any field work that was being conducted by the Census Bureau is on hold. So um, I was looking online and some people reported that you know they noticed that Census Bureau workers were not visiting homes. That is out of the, for the safety and health of everybody so the safety of the Census Bureau workers, as well as all of us, we're supposed to be staying at home, limiting, limiting contact, physical contact with other people outside of the home. So again, they have identified June 1st as the date when field work is supposed to resume, and you may see Census Bureau workers in your neighborhood again. But just note that if you can fill out the, the census online, by mail or by phone, do that. Um, because there is, there are only so many Census Bureau workers to actually visit homes and fill out the census. So they really push you, if you can, to fill it out in a different way. Um, just like all of us, the Census Bureau has definitely adjusted their timelines due to COVID-19. So when we were doing this training in person in uh, January, February, or even very early March, this is the information that we were sharing with folks, and this was current at that point. Everybody was planning to get their Census Bureau invites in the mail uh, mid-March, and uh, they were expected to fill it out, you know, be, by, by the end of April. They were going to be sending those postcards. This is the mailing number five. It's not too late. This was the time frame for that, the last, last push from the Census Bureau. Um, so this is kind of what their time frame looked like before COVID. Um, and this is a nice graphic that I pulled from the Census Bureau website too. They have so much fantastic information on the website. I would really urge you to check it out. Um, but again, their 2020 census timeline actually started in 2018 and will continue and will still continue through 2021 next year, well into next year. 
Um, so kind of the operations and implementation began early this year. They actually started visiting remote uh, households in Alaska back in January of 2020. And you may say like, oh, that's weird. Like, why is Alaska, why do they have a jump on Alaska? Everybody else was getting their invites mid-March. Well, it turns out once the thaw begins in Alaska, it's impossible to cross some major rivers or to access certain households by March. So they had to start early when everything was still frozen um, and they can safely, the Census Bureau workers can safely access those households. So um, again, internet self-response did begin in March on time. Folks should have gotten their first invite to complete the census in mid-March. April 1st was still census day. And again, not a deadline, but more of a reference point. And non-response follow-up is still being mailed out and still should be received by households who haven't completed the census. But what starts to change a little bit is the, the end of the year and next year's dates for finalizing the numbers and delivering that information to the president and Congress. So let's look at exactly how much has been adjusted. So we are being asked to fill out the census by Halloween. We should all have it completed by October 31st. So again, the option is fill it out on the internet with your unique census ID, fill it out by mail, fill out the paper copy of the census that was mailed to your house or opt to fill out the census over the phone in one of 13 languages. Um, from April to September of this year, the Census Bureau workers are going to work with administration at um, colleges, uh, prisons, and generally other places that a lot of people live together in one space. So again, think of dormitories, um, correctional facilities, and nursing homes. So a lot of people living in the same place. That will still happen from April to September of this year. From August 11th to October 31st, you will see Census uh, Bureau workers interviewing people in person, visiting households to prompt folks to fill out the census, um, and again, you may have seen this before, and we're going to get into specifics of um, how we can make sure that, that we're identifying the Census Bureau worker and staying safe during that time. Because you may see Census Bureau employees walking around your neighborhood. And again, that is to prompt people to fill out the census. From October 31st to April 30th of next year, the Census Bureau is going to crunch the numbers. So they're going to review all the data. They have a special check in place to get rid of duplicate responses if someone filled out the census by phone, internet, and mail um, and got a little bit overzealous, there's a way for them to check that. So by April 30th of next year, the Census Bureau is legally required to deliver the apportionment count. So I, I talked about this a little bit before, but essentially the apportionment account is the process of dividing those 435 seats of the U.S. House of Representatives amongst the whole nation. So how many seats will each state receive? And that's based on the apportionment population count from the census. The apportionment population count is the total resident population. So that's every single person living in a particular state, citizens and non-citizens included, plus any overseas federal employees, their dependents, their family members who are listed as having a home state um, with their employer. So think of like a military family living in Japan. If they um, are from Indiana, they're going to be counted towards the Indiana apportionment population count. So that kind of gets into the nitty gritty, but just to hammer home how critical it is that the results of the census really do determine more than just funding even, it determines how much representation each state will receive in terms of federal government uh, and federal legislation. So the Census Bureau has to deliver that total count and their recommendation for you know, this is this is how many people plus 
overseas employees, overseas uh, people working overseas that are accounted in each state. That's given to the president and Congress by April 30th of next year. So I'd like to spend um, a couple minutes just reviewing some unfortunate rumors that have been circulating about the census. Um, this is a snap from the census website. Uh, as we see right here, one of the rumors was that the census does ask about citizenship. We know that that's not true. Right here, you see it. The Census Bureau is saying, no, we are not asking about citizenship. So if you see that information um, cir circulating online, feel free to reference the Census Bureau website. No, we're not asking about citizenship. All we need to know is every single person living in a particular state. Um, are non-citizens counted? Absolutely, everyone counts. Everyone living in the country counts. And can any answers that I share on the census be used against me? No. So we've covered all this already, but here it is um, coming straight from the source, coming straight from the United States Census Bureau website. And the Census Bureau actually put out a call to ask folks that, you know, if you see rumors circulating on Facebook or any other type of social media, share it with them. It, they want to make sure to dispel rumors and to promote participation. So you can definitely play a part in making sure that accurate information is shared and everybody has factual information about the 2020 census. So it is a fact that Census Bureau workers may visit your home, but they won't be doing that until after June 1st due to COVID. If they visit your home, they will absolutely have a badge and an identification. So the badge will have their photo on it, a US Department of Commerce watermark. So that's kind of what it looks like right there. That's the watermark that'll be on the badge, as well as an expiration date. If someone visits your home saying that they are a Census Bureau worker, you can still ask them uh, to, you can ask them to show their ID. They should be more than happy to do that but you can also call the Census Bureau directly to um, verify the identity of that person. It's important that you feel safe and comfortable with a person if they are you know, coming into your home to fill out the census or approaching you at your home to ask questions about the census. So you do have the right to verify that information. But just keep in mind that the Census Bureau employees do have valid ID on them and they will show it to you. So another rumor that was circulating was that the census will ask you for a social security number or credit card information. That is never true. The 2020 census does not ask for your social, your social security number, your bank account or credit card numbers. They do not ask any questions about your political affiliation or non-affiliation. They will not ask you about your savings account, checking account, or any uh, charitable donations that you've made. The Census Bureau will also never contact you on behalf of a political party. Um, so you want to look out for different maybe emails, um, often called phishing scams, phishing emails, which basically says that a particular person is phishing for information online. Um, so we, at some point or another, we've probably all received a phishing text or email. Um, the best thing to do is to delete that information uh, don't open it if it's not from a sender that you know. And just keep in mind that any information shared by the Census Bureau will end in .gov. So if you remember a couple of slides ago when I shared Cheryl Bolden's information, it was her name and it ended in .gov. So it's not .com, like Amazon.com. It's a commercial website. They make money off of their website. Um, the Ark of New Jersey, is arcnj.org. We are a nonprofit organization. And the government websites end in .gov. So look for that information if you ever receive um, an email or any kind of prompt. If it's from the Census Bureau, it will end in .gov. And this is that valid ID I was talking about. Um, so Stephen Patterson was actually working in 
Alaska. He was one of the Census Bureau employees that went out in early 2020 to gather census information from those remote households in Alaska. Um, here is a photo of a Census Bureau employee. Uh, looks like they're trying to access a particular household or to verify the address of a particular household. And if you notice, she is carrying a messenger bag with the United States Census Bureau on it. I enlarged the image just so you can get a clearer picture of that. But she's also wearing a lanyard that should have an identification attached to it. So again, it is okay to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. The Census Bureau employees want you to feel comfortable. And you, again, you're looking for the watermark the Department of Commerce watermark, a clear name, and expiration date. And again, it's a little grainy, but I just wanted you to be able to see it um, closely. And for example, Stephen Patterson is a US Census Bureau enumerator and his ID expires on June 13th, 2020. Um, so again, those might be extended due to COVID because field operations are suspended until June 1st, but just keep on the lookout for for this type of information, which should be on, uh, which should be produced by every Census Bureau employee if they are attempting to visit your household. So, it is May fifth. What can you do right now? The census has been going on for a little while. Um, you may have received a couple invites in the mail. So I would ask that you complete the census. Make a decision. Are you going to complete it by mail? Are you going to use the internet? or are you going to request um, a phone interview? Visit the Census Bureau website. Um, so it's www.census.gov. It's a government website that ends in .gov. Do some additional research. Check out the FA, uh, Frequently Asked Questions. Uh, they have a lot of great information on there that may help you, in addition to what you've learned this afternoon, it may help you feel more comfortable with the census, the impact of the census, um, and feel more prepared to fill it out. And I would also say that I have helped encourage other people to fill it out. Um, the Self Advocacy Project has done trainings on why it's so important to fill it out. There is an impact on all of us. It's a shared responsibility. So this is a civic duty, just like voting, right? We want to make sure our voice is heard in this gigantic, um, democracy that we live in, it's important to take every opportunity so that our voices are heard. And also check rumors. So we talked about a couple of them already, especially the citizenship issue um, and you know field visits and different things about the census, but spread accurate information, share some facts. I think everybody can, can um, it, that's something that everybody can do to make sure that we are being responsible about the information we share. So if you do see a rumor circulating, just say like, hey, actually, you know, this is this is what they're looking for. Um, it may help to change someone's mind. And again, that can make the difference in our state. That could ensure that if we get a full and complete count, all of the funding that people living in New Jersey need to live their best lives and receive all the supports that they need will be counted. So just one last um, reminder, it is your responsibility to complete the census. You and members of your household are being asked by the federal government to take a couple minutes to fill this out. It is quick, it's super easy. Um, if you are in need of some assistance or some support, ask someone in your life that you trust um, and I'm sure they'll be happy to help you fill this out. It's information that should be readily available to you um, it is not too late. You can still complete the census today. You can jump off the webinar at three o'clock and complete it right away. Just check your mail. Um, if you want to complete it by mail, you can do that. There's a self-address envelope. You do not have to put a stamp on that envelope. It is already postage paid. So it doesn't cost anything to participate in the census. And it is safe and secure. The answers that you provide, the information you provide, will be kept confidential and used only for the purposes we already discussed. And just another reminder, the Census Bureau website right here, this is a live link. You can jump on there and check out all the great information that they have shared. So who 
is ready to be counted. Feel free to respond in the questions box if you would like. Um, but I'm really curious, you know, I, I, I hope that this information is helpful. I hope this information has helped to dispel rumors and has helped to just help you feel more comfortable with the purpose of the census and your role in the whole process. So I do help, hope you're ready and prepared to be counted. And I, I'm happy to take any questions at this time. We're gonna devote just a couple minutes to answering any questions or comments or feedback that anybody would like to share. As a reminder, the Self Advocacy Project team is, we're devoted to promoting advocacy and education to students and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities statewide. We are still very much, we are at work. We wanna make sure that people are connected, advocates are staying active during this time, we so appreciate everyone's support and attendance in this webinar. We are going to make sure that a copy of the slides will be emailed to you along with a survey. So if you found this webinar helpful, please let us know. And we will be also sending a certificate of completion for everybody who was signed on to the webinar for, the, uh, for its entirety. Um, again, if you have any questions or want to get in touch, this is our information. Feel free to check us out online. We have a lot going on on social media. We are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And again, yeah, we just really appreciate your support and thank you for participating in today's webinar. And uh, thank you again. I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon.